Hello everyone, my name is Isabella Valencia and today we will cover embryonic development. I chose this topic because it is so fascinating and quite beautiful to see the cellular making of a new human being. Embryonic development is also essential so that we can prepare the embryo for further development to become a fetus. So let's jump right into it. Phase 1, the early embryonic period, a fertilized zygote to blastocyst implantation. Once the zygote is fertilized, it goes through rapid mitotic divisions, also known as cleavage. The cells have a high surface area to volume ratio so that there is a better uptake of nutrients and oxygen. The many cells are considered the building blocks of the embryo and sets the foundation for embryonic development. Mitosis would continue until the embryo that is floating around the uterus contains about 100 cells. Once cleavage is completed, the blastocyst forms, which is a fluid-filled sphere that has an outer layer of trophoblast cells and about 20 to 30 cells on one side of the sphere. It forms when the embryo tightens its connections with neighboring cells. As the blastocyst collects fluid, it hatches free from its outer layer, the zona pellucida. Now that it is floating around the uterus, it needs to find a cozy place on the uterine wall to stay for the next several weeks. The hormones estrogen and progesterone are released for the endometrium to be more welcoming to the blastocyst. The integrin and selectin proteins in the trophoblast bind to endometrial cells and selectin carbohydrates, and the blastocyst nestles itself into the upper uterine wall, which consists of collagen, fibronectin, and laminin. The blastocyst absorbs nutrients from the embryonic cells until the placenta forms. Phase 2. Embryonic development from the gastrula to a fetus. During this period, extra embryonic membranes are formed. The amion is the membrane that wraps around the embryo and fills in with a clear fluid, acting like an embryonic water balloon. There is also a yolk sac, which forms the embryo's first blood cells and blood vessels. The allonotoy supports the placenta by contributing to respiration and waste storage. The embryo is then ready to go through gastrulation. This process generates three primary germ layers. The ectoderm is the outer layer that structures the nervous system and the epidermis. The endoderm is the innermost layer that lines the digestive, respiratory, and urogenital systems. The mesoderm lies right in between the two layers and forms the rest of the body. Once gastrulation is completed, the embryo goes through organogenesis, in which the organs and organ systems are formed, concluding the process of embryonic development and initiates fetal development. So this concludes my video on embryonic development and thank you so much for watching!